My brothers and sisters in Christ, the very first time I attended a, a priestly ordination, I was very moved by, by something that a, a priest shared with me uh, for, for the moment. I was sitting in the pews, and he, he shared with me uh, an insight that has stuck with me, not just in the future ordinations, but at other times when we pray the litany of the saints at Mass, uh, which comes up in certain Mass or sacraments. And as, of course, in the litany of saints, we, we individually invoke the names of, of a bunch of saints, asking them to pray for us. And this pastor, and it, this was here at the Co-Cathedral, uh, shared with me the thought of, in a sense, uh, imagining, of praying, as hearing each saint's names called out, knowing that, you know, we have either depictions of art or the more modern ones, we know what they look like, but imagining, in a sense, each of those saints appearing in the sanctuary, uh, as called upon praying over, whether over the, the men to be ordained, laying prostrate on the floor, whatever the occasion, imagining them in the sanctuary, populating, in a sense, as the saints are called upon. And this beautiful thing has always stuck with me as uh, a beautiful insight into the nature of the heavenly liturgy and our participation in it at Mass. In today's first reading from the Hebrews, we hear a contrast uh, between the, the Old Covenant and the New. The, the letter to the Hebrews does this a lot. And speaks, contrasts the experience of the Jewish people at Mount Sinai. In a sense, as Moses was up the mountain receiving the covenant, the people at the foothill, speaks of not only the, the sense of, of fear the, that the Jewish people had, but because it was a very tangible experience. It wasn't mystical. In a sense, it, it was very real to them. The clouds, the thunderclaps, you know, the trumpet blast, the booming voice, they, these things were very tangible, very real to them in this regard. And in a sense, God related to them uh, almost as other. In a sense, God was external. It was the people encountering the, the God before them that was so overpowering and awesome that it would just brought them to fear and trembling. What we, we speak of this as fear and trembling as, as awe, the, the fear of the Lord, uh, so to speak. And yet he compares it to something better that we experience. The, the letter to the Hebrews says that we have uh, access to, to something different. He goes on to list, you know, this litany of uh, of the saints, of the sprinkled blood more eloquent than the blood of Abel, speaks uh, in a sense of the, when the approach to, to Mount Zion. He's speaking of the heavenly Jerusalem, the, the approach to this. And this may sound strange because many people today would lament and ask, you know, I wish Lord, the Lord would speak to me in a thunderclap or something more tangible. You know, it's just the, this, this spiritual sense for me is hard for me to know what God is saying. And yet what the letter of the Hebrews is saying is our participation in the heavenly liturgy, what is, which is what happens every time we celebrate the Mass. If heaven, the heavenly liturgy, in a sense, is the eternal presence uh, of the saints and angels in glory around the heavenly throne. It's, it's like eternal Mass, in a, a sense of truly at the, the feet of the Lamb, at the, at the foot of God worshiping for all eternity. Each time we celebrate the Mass, we are entering into, we're not repeating something or reenacting, but we are entering into the heavenly liturgy. For us, it's incomplete because our sense of it is incomplete. And yet, that doesn't make it any less real. And so, even though we don't experience at Mass the booming voice of God audibly in our ears, or, or just because we don't see a flash of lightning at the consecration you know, that shocks our senses in this way, what we actually have access to in the liturgy is more powerful than anything the people in the Old Covenant ever experienced. Even though when we read the scriptures, it may seem more powerful or poignant. And I said, how much more blessed are we? We participate in this. And so, as that priest told me, in a sense, yes, it's imagining. In a sense, my eyes don't see the saints gathering in the sanctuary as we call upon their names. And yet, the reality is they are present. When we celebrate the heavenly liturgy, the reason we're calling upon the saints is we are uniting with the church triumphant in heaven. The saints who have gone before us, the angels around the throne, are participating with us in that Mass, even though we don't see them with our eyes. 
This isn't something that's by analogy. This is real. And it should, in a sense, bring us to the same knee-wobbling trembling that the people of the Old Covenant did, but not out of fear that the Lord is about to slay us in His sight, but the awe and majesty of the goodness of God and the sacredness of what is happening, the holy ground we step on every time that we enter into the divine mysteries in our celebration of the Mass. I know as a priest, in that moment of intimacy, to, to step and to act in the person of Christ at the altar is more than words can express to you. But this isn't just a, a secret mystery for the priest. It's for all of us. It, it is what we're united to in, in the divine mysteries, the paschal mystery of Christ, every time we celebrate the Mass. And so, my point today is, in reading this beautiful, eloquent exposition of the letter to the Hebrews, May we never take the Mass for granted. Yes, we do it every Sunday. Some of us do it every day. But it is the most precious thing we have. There is nothing on earth better than the sacred mysteries. And we can pray and long for the day when we will know nothing else. May God bless you all.